So the question is, when operating with true macular traction uh, cases, do we need to peel the ILM as well? Uh, here is a good case for demonstration. This is a Caucasian gentleman in his 60s with significant vitreo macular traction. For several years, he had uh, unilateral disc edema that was undiagnosed and actually was a result of vitreo papillary traction. Vision was reduced to less than 20 over 100 with distortion. Uh, he only had some uh, mild nuclear cataract. I performed combined uh, cataract vitrectomy surgery. Here you can see the total hyaloid uh, peeled off the optic nerve. Uh, this is the appearance after the hyaloid is peeled off the macula and the optic nerve with persistent traction from epiretinal membrane. Uh, because his fovea was a little bit uh, thin with a lamellar macular hole, um, I peeled his epiretinal membrane trying to spare uh, the fovea. So this is the area of where the membranes actually connect to the disc as well. And here's all the membranes uh, peeled off but still attached to the fovea. This is the interoperative appearance of the peeled uh, membranes hanging onto the fovea. And then these membranes were trimmed off with the cutter using low suction. This is the interoperative OCT and the appearance was very satisfactory. Not significant traction remaining. And in this case I would not peel the ILM. Uh, and that's usually what I do in most cases. If there's no significant traction, I prefer to leave the ILM uh, alone. I think less is more and the ILM is there for a purpose. I don't like the appearance after ILM peeling with the retina being very thin. This is the post-operative appearance and this patient did fantastic with vision improving up to 20-25 and he's really very happy. His macula looked very nice. Thank you so much for watching.